Let's talk about how we add some of our basic cartographic elements to ArcMap. Here we can see I'm in a layout view uh, because my layout view toggle button is selected. Um, I could go back to data view if I wanted to and just see my map. If I wanted to do more processing, I could do that. Um, but here we can see we have, uh, believe it or not, this is Chula Vista land use in 1986. Um, and I'm going to go through how to add some of the basic cartographic elements that are not the legend. I have another video on formatting your legend, um, so we're not going to worry about that. I already have one added. Um, we can add in our title by clicking on the insert drop down menu and clicking on title. Um, you can see I have one from when I was practicing this video, but we can add in. If you did not have a title, um, it would prompt you to add it in. And then we could go into some of the symbol properties and make this a bit larger. Or whatever size you wanted. We could also change the font, um, but we're going to be leaving it um, like this for now. Um, you could move it over here if you wanted um, to increase the side that way, add a border, um, whatever you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Add a halo if you needed to. It's all within um, your formatting options, but we're not going to get that in too much detail into it now. Um, let's make this a little larger since we're putting it on the map. How big is that? Um, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Um, oh, this is 1986, not 2018. That's important to make sure your data is correct, or your titles are correct, especially if you have year after year. Um, anyway, okay, now we're right. Um, the next thing we can do is add our um, north arrow. I like to keep them as simple as possible, and as I always say, the north arrow should not be the star of your show. Um, so if your north arrow is the N is the same size as the title, or it's overlapping your map, that's way too big. Um, so we can just size that way down. If you were doing maybe a navigation map, that might be a little bit different. But for this one, we're really just looking at um, land use. So we don't need a giant map or a giant north arrow. On along the same lines, insert our scale bar. It's another required thing. I also like really simple scale bars. I can adjust some of those properties right away. I tend to, especially if I know the scale bar is going to be kind of small, get rid of some of the divisions in it. Um, so let's add that in. And we can see that the default scale bar puts it in decimal degrees. Um, so this unit of measurement might make no sense to you. Um, what's nice is we can change it easily. If it has projection information, we can just change it into something like miles or kilometers, whatever works for your audience. And then it still needs a little fixing. Um, it's still a little big. I don't know why it's going to the right either, but we'll worry about that later. Um, it still works. Um, I would resize this a lot way down. Um, again, not the most important information. We don't want your scale bar to be confused with the title or to have text, you know, be close to the size of the title too much. That's way too much. We don't need all that. Again, if it's a navigation, maybe you could have a case for it, but do, do, do. I just want this one. There we go. Actually, now I have to change it again because I changed the format. There we go. So it's good if it is like a value that kind of makes sense, which you can adjust in your properties too, but if not, it's not the, you know, when you're starting out, that's not the end of the, the road for you. Um, all right. So we're working on balance a little bit, adding these things down here. So we've got our inset map. Um, now let's see, title legend. I want to show you how to add a 
text box. So we need to bring up the draw toolbar. So there are two different ways to add text to your map. You can go to insert text, um, but this sometimes gets confusing because it's just a little itty bitty text box that you have to make sure you find. Otherwise, I'll just see text written all over your map. So we could use this for our data source. And then it's a little bit easier to move. Or you could add in your author information, contact information using that. For more detailed text, like let's say I wanted to add in um, some information about what's on this map, um, we can add in a text box. This, oh no, not that way. Do, do, do. We can add in our box here. Actually, hang on. Let's try that again. So we can add in our text box under the A, the drop down menu, rectangle text or circle text or polygon text. Add that right in here. Um, let's say you wanted to add some more details about this map. So I have this already written out, just a little bit about what the land uses were in Chula Vista in 1986. I can just paste that into the text box or I can add that in if I wanted to. Um, you can add in a frame, which this one has one that I want. If you wanted a background information, you could add that in as well. Um, we can also adjust the size of the text by going under change symbol. I don't know why they just don't put it up front. Let's see what that looks like. Um, that makes it look a little bit better. A little clearer, easier to read. You can mess around with how that's positioned. Um, the lab will take you through how to add in um, the snap lines. Um, I haven't used them on this one. Maybe I should have for the demo, but they can be helpful when you have a lot of things to place. Um, you'll notice I also have my inset map, which you can see over here is just an additional data frame. So now if I clicked on the data view, it would take me to this inset map. But if I change my data frame, I made this the active one, it'll take me back to my land use map. But let's stay over here and we'll go back to our map. Um, to, this will automatically add um, to your layout. If you don't want it, you can always move it aside or just delete it. Um, you can also just insert it um, and it will add in. Um, Anyway, what I want to do now, um, so you can see that I have Chula Vista highlighted here in the gray. Um, I can add in, first we're going to add in a title with a text option. Just keep it simple. Where's that little text? There it is. Um, maybe make this a little bit bigger. We want to add in maybe a um, extent indicator so we kind of know what is being shown on this map. This gets a little tricky, so forgive me if this takes me a minute. Um, but we want to go to properties and it's under extent indicators. So it tells you you can add one or more extent indicators to this data frame. Each extent indicator shows the extent of the data in one of the other data frames and automatically updates the extent. So we can push over the layers. We can change the frame line. This is a little thick. Um, for such a small area. Um, we can change that color back to red if we wanted or whatever color you wanted. So let's see. You could add a leader line in if you wanted to. I'll show you what it doesn't looks like without it and then we'll add it in. Let's see if I did this right. Yeah, all right. So the data frame you want to add this box into, this extent indicator into, um, that's where you go to your data frame extent indicators. Um, if I wanted an extent indicator for this map, for the, for the land use map, I'd add it to this layers. Um, so let's see if I add in the simple extent. I'm sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. See, that didn't change much. If you wanted to show the leader line, um, I don't know if it's going to add one because we're not necessarily off to the side. Let's see if I move this somewhere if it adds in the leader line. Yeah. 
So if this was like a big layout where we had a bunch of things and you wanted to kind of point out, if maybe if we had um, Chula Vista and Escondido or something and you wanted to point out which area was which, you could use that, but it doesn't necessarily do us any benefits when it's right um, on the map. So we'll take that off. Oops. Oh yeah, if you ever get that like double or hash mark, I just have to um, double click on it and it'll go away. Or click somewhere else, I should say. So, we go to properties, we'll turn off the extent indicator, or the, the leader line, and click apply. So that's the basic things that I would add in to save this. We go to file, export map, and if you're adding it to your project, you could save it as a JPEG, or if you're just handing it in as an assignment, you could save it as a PDF or a JPEG or whatever um, you wanted. Um, other thing to remember, the only things, how much time do I have left in this video? Just a couple minutes. Um, the only thing, anything that's off the page, like this, will not be, so this black line represents that virtual page. Anything not within this black line will not be printed or will not be exported. So if you leave this extent map over here, I won't see it. So make sure everything's on this page that we're seeing. Alrighty. Um, I think that's it.